Phytochromes are pigment molecules that are found within plants and are responsible for plant growth, seed germination, and they are also responsible for when a plant will produce flowers. Now when we talk about phytochromes, they are essentially blue-green pigment molecules that receive light, but we have two different types of phytochromes. We have far red and we have red. Now, far red is the active state, whereas the red state, uh, the, the phytochrome red, is the inactive state. And as their name suggests, phytochrome red will absorb red light, whereas phytochrome far red will absorb far red light. Now, in the sunlight we receive from the sun, red light is more predominant compared to the far red light. And this is going to be very important. Because when our phytochrome red absorbs that red light, it is converted into phytochrome far red. And when phytochrome far red absorbs that far red light, it is converted into phytochrome red. But since we have predominantly red light during the day, we will see an increase of phytochrome far red compared to phytochrome red because this process is occurring more because we have predominantly red light. Now when we talk about plants, we have two main types of plants. We have the short day plants and we have the long day plants. So the short day plants are the ones that will flower during the winter time because they are inhibited by PFR and we will understand why they are inhibited by PFR. Versus the long day plants, they flower in the summertime. Now to understand the effects of PFR uh, and how they affect the flowering period of different plants, we have to understand that in the summertime we have longer days and shorter nights versus in the wintertime where we have shorter days and longer nights. Now if we have long days, that means we are receiving a lot of sunlight. If we are receiving a lot of sunlight, that means we are receiving a lot of red light. If we're receiving a lot of red light, that means phytochrome red will be absorbing a lot of red light and it will actively be converted into phytochrome far red. So we will see a buildup of phytochrome far red because we have very long days. During the nighttime, when we no longer have that sunlight, that phytochrome far red is converted into phytochrome red. It slowly degenerates uh, into phytochrome red. But if the night is very short, the phytochrome far red does not have enough time to completely generate back into phytochrome red. So we still see a high level of phytochrome far red. In the winter time, we have shorter days and longer nights. We still see that accumulation of phytochrome far red because our, our light that we are receiving from the sun is predominantly red light compared to far red. But since we have the longer nights, the phytochrome far red has more time to be converted back into phytochrome red. So it has more time to degenerate back into phytochrome red. Now if we take a look at the graphs of short days versus long day plants, we can understand that in the summertime, we have high levels of PF, uh, phytochrome far red during the day. So this would represent the day, and this would be the night, and same over here. The day, the peaks represent the day, and the valleys represent the night. So in the summer, when we have those long days, we are producing a lot of phytochrome far red. And during the nighttime, the, PF, the phytochrome far red does not have enough time uh, to, be, to be fully degenerated back into phytochrome red. So it does not fall below uh, the threshold point. So if we theory, uh, hypothetically define that threshold point to be five, the uh, phytochrome far red is not going below the level five. Now, since it is not dropping back down, the short day plants, when they experience an accumulation of phytochrome far red, they are inhibited uh, they are inhibited and they will not f produce flowers. So in the summertime, the phytochrome far red, it does not have enough time because the nights are very short. So there is an accumulation of PFR because it is not being converted into phytochrome red. And that accumulation of PFR is what inhibits the flowering in short day plants. 
Now those short day plants are able to produce flowers in the winter time because in the winter time when we have those longer nights, the, the phytochrome far red has enough time to be degenerated back into phytochrome red. So we no longer have that accumulation. And uh, we can see that it drops below that threshold point. So this means that there, there is no longer an accumulation of PFR, and the PFR can no longer inhibit the short day plants. Therefore, the short day plants will produce flowers in the winter time. Now, for the long day plants, it is the opposite because the, in the long day plants, PFR actually promotes flowering. So in the long day plants, when there is an accumulation of PFR because the PFR uh, is being produced during those long days and it does not have enough time to be converted back into PR during the nighttime, there is that high accumulation and uh, that high accumulation is promoting flowering in long day plants. But in the winter time, when we have low levels of PFR because we have those long nights and those long nights cause PFR to be converted into PR, there is not enough PFR to promote the flowering of long day plants, so the long day plants will not produce flowers during the winter time. So PFR is very important when it comes to um, the flowering stages of different plants. The short day plants, they will flower in the winter, and the long day plants, they'll flower in the summer, because PFR inhibits the short day plants, but it promotes growth in the long day plants.